And so we live our lives trying to put it out of our head, but death is very important. It's one of the four final things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. You are living your life as a preparation to die. And you- oh, wow. You missed an opportunity to say that the only things certain in life are death and taxes. Then you can throw into this rambling rant some trash joke about how the government supports the execution of your wallet. Hi, my name is Scarlett, and I'm an atheist and skeptic, and today we are looking at Michael Knowles, a dipshit Christian bigot from the Daily Wire. It's not a long clip, but the bullshit is thick. I guess when you have a live show multiple times a week, you don't have time to fuss with statistics and actual research. The Daily Wire crew like to present themselves as the adults in the room, the ones doing all the deep philosophical work of thinking about the world. But really, they're just a bunch of social scolds with microphones and nice production values. I'm surprised they don't have irritable bowel syndrome from pulling shit out of their asses on the daily. But let's get into it. Here's the setup. A viewer asked Knowles if he supported bringing back public executions. And this ramble of garbage is how Knowles decided to tackle a complex issue that actually has been studied. Anyway, let's see where he gets off the ground. That, that would do a lot to bring back the deterrent effect of capital punishment, certainly. First things first, there is sizable evidence that the death penalty doesn't deter murder. I don't want to spend too much time on this because Knowles does not elaborate on it, and it's not why I chose this particular clip to tackle. For the record, I am against capital punishment in general because I am not convinced that it represents actual justice. But when you consider the number of people who are wrongly imprisoned, this solidifies my position. Even if it were justice, even if it is a deterrent, are we sure that this is the person who committed the crime? I have a friend who is a lawyer who works pro bono on the Innocence Project, an initiative dedicated to helping the wrongly accused get a new trial and avoid the death penalty. It's amazing how many people are prosecuted on little or bad evidence. And they are usually the poor, often people of color, usually low education. Uh, Anyway, I don't want to get into the weeds about all the issues of our legal system, but this is more complicated and Knowles just puts this out there. Maybe it's a deterrent. The fact is proponents of the death penalty usually just assert that it is a deterrent and imagine our system is flawless. The accused must be the murderer and now justice is done. That's how it's usually portrayed. As it is, people wrongly accused who don't face the death penalty spend years or even decades in prison. At least we can let them out to live some semblance of a life. The death penalty is final. There's no making anything right. But based on the things Noel says, I don't think he cares if people waste away in prison. Not sure, just a thought. Let's move on to the next clip. Uh, But furthermore, it would be good because people just don't see death, period, anymore. We used to see death. I'm not saying we want more people to die. Well, isn't that reassuring? We don't want more people to die. Well, thank you that we appreciate that qualifier. Oh, we need to recognize that death does happen. We try to run away from death. We try to hide death. We hide aging. We pack ourselves full of cosmetics. We pack ourselves full of all sorts of surgeries to pretend that we're not aging. And do I need to say that we don't literally? pack ourselves full of cosmetics or surgery? Maybe he is just thinking Botox. But maybe we pack on cosmetics. People get surgeries. I don't think this is just about avoiding death. Anyway, back to the beginning of the clip. It is true that people used to see death more in the past. And in some cultures around the world, this is still the case. In Western cultures, though, where Knowles is focused, in general, there was nowhere else for a dead body. It was possible to have three or more generations under the same roof. So you saw aging grandparents on the daily. Yeah, so death was more prevalent back in the day. Not arguing with that, but does that is it better? That's a, a judgment call. But hiding aging, which is the next thing he goes to, is not just about death. We have a youth-centered culture. I don't think this is about death alone. It is also about quality of life. We want active, fulfilled lives, and we think that it is in youth that we have these kinds of lives. That's it. So again, this is a little more complicated, our obsession with how we look and being youthful. There's more there 
than just about death. This is also about how we are in society, how people perceive us, a whole host of things. But hey, just throw it out there. Just throw it out there into your little rant, right? And then when people look like they're about to die, we shove them off into special little centers, old uh, hospice and old age homes, and we try to just separate them. These utterances lack utter nuance. By the way, hospice can be in a person's home. My mother died at home under hospice care, and I was there at the end. But people put parents in nursing homes for lots of reasons, not just to avoid seeing death or aging. If you have an ill parent, someone with cognitive decline, someone with particular health needs, they might be better served in a good facility. Because of my age, I know lots of people taking care of aging parents or whose parents have recently passed away. There is definitely a mix of options depending on the circumstances. Many people can live on their own even at an old age and they don't need extra care. I have friends in this circumstance who visit their parents very regularly, take them to doctors, help them with house care and other needs. I know others whose parents don't need a thing. Some of my friends have chosen nursing homes because the parent needs something more. Have you ever tried to lift a person who cannot walk of their own accord? You can hurt yourself. In fact, nurses hurt themselves often with this kind of care. Are there people who shove their parents in a home and don't visit? Sure. Maybe they didn't have a good relationship with them. Maybe they're shitty people, the parents or the kids. I don't know. But Knowles is acting like everyone is doing the same thing and we're all doing it to avoid thinking about death. And he's also making the point that we're very different from people in the past. But that isn't true. I provide as one point of evidence this tale from Verona collected by Italo Calvino in a collection called Italian Fables. It is called The Village Where You Don't Die, and it is about a young man's search for a place where he won't have to die. It starts off, One day a young man said, I don't really care much for this deal that everyone has to die. I want to search for a place where you never have to die. He says goodbye to his father, mother, aunts, uncles, and cousins, and leaves. I recommend it. It's a fun fable. It's only a few pages. It's a fable. So these are very short. They're anonymous. Not even sure exactly where it dates from. Sometime in the Middle Ages or the early Renaissance. I'm not sure. But anyway, this is a point that even in the past, people did not enjoy death and they wanted to avoid death and they did not want to see death, etc., etc. And this is just one point. A lot of ancient philosophy was about how humans deal with the fact that they die. And there are different philosophies that stem from that. Rulers used to declare themselves gods in a way to avoid death. Our particular way of dealing may be new, but it's not like people in the past enjoyed the thought of their mortality or they were a-okay with their loved ones dying. All right, enough said about that. You could go on and on about these points, but let's move on to the next clip. Them. When they do die, we don't really do open casket wakes anymore. We don't do proper funerals anymore. We do these brief little celebrations of life. We burn up the body as quickly as possible. We ignore the fact that death has happened. Then sometime later, maybe you will have a celebration of life ceremony where you basically just gather with your friends and have dinner to try to process death. But it's a death that you won't look in the face. What kind of life does Knowles lead? Yeah, there are celebration of life ceremonies, but people still have traditional, forget proper, funerals. I can't tell you how many open casket ceremonies I've been to in the last few years. Different traditions do have different funerals. The ones I'm thinking were Greek Orthodox and Catholic. A friend's dad died just this year and I attended the visitation, open casket. My aunt and uncle, who died back in the mid-20-teens, had open casket visitation and funerals, and there was a service at the cemetery. When my mom died back in 2019, I did have her cremated, and we did do just a celebration of life, but that was a choice we made. When she was dying, people came to visit her. I was there in the house with her when she died, as I've already said, so it's not like people were avoiding her. They wanted to say goodbye. They wanted to tell her that they loved her. I had a few students this year who had grandparents who were dying and they were going to see them in the hospital to say goodbye and then there were funerals. And remember, the start of this line of reasoning was, should we have public executions? 
Why are we just criticizing people for the way they choose to grieve? What does whether we have open casket funerals and if we visit our relatives in a nursing home have to do with public executions? Well, nothing. But we are supposed to get the impression that back in the day, people knew how to live and we need to get back there somehow to the place where everything was the way it should be. So public executions and grandma dying at home staring you in the face. There you go. Problem solved. In the face. And so we live our lives trying to put it out of our head, but death is very important. It's one of the four final things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. The four final things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell, just thrown out there like it's all obvious. Like the four directions, east, west, north, south, or the four other certainties, taxes, government overreach, men with guns enforcing the tax laws, and conservative reactionaries to complain about it all. Anyway, speak for yourself, dumbass. I'm living my life to live my life. Why should I obsess about death? Because you believe in judgment and heaven and hell. Hell, you are living your life as a preparation to die, and you need to be prepared for your death. In, in, the, in the olden times, people would pray for a good death, by which they meant a death that they saw coming, that they could prepare for, that wasn't sudden. Today, we people pray for a good death, meaning they don't want to know what's happening. They basically want a piano to fall on their head so that they're just walking along one day with their Frappuccino, having a lovely time thinking about, I don't know, whatever they just saw on Instagram, and then it's all over, and they think they go to oblivion. They don't Citation needed that people wanted to prepare for death. Sure, some did, and some still do. But really, this is more, people used to know how to live, and now we're just wusses talk. And throw in Instagram and some frou-frou coffee as bonus shade thrown at millennials, I guess, or Gen Z. I don't know. Michael, my man, you look too young to be giving off this old man shakes his fist at the clouds energy. They don't think that the soul persists after natural death. And so we're, our view of death is just so perverse now. You know what's perverse? You, thinking you know what the fuck you're talking about. Throughout time, people have had different views of what happens after death. The Christian one has not been the only one. Not everyone believes in heaven and hell. The Jews don't have a clear idea what happens after death. Some religions posit that our physical bodies will be resurrected at the end of time. The Greeks thought that souls were ushered down to Hades and then they were just kind of there, but they could be brought back through some kind of blood magic. Never quite understood what the Greeks were thinking about, but it's all interesting to read. Anyway, this is more golden olden times rambling. Oh, we're so decadent and superficial with our social media and our fancy flavored coffees. How dare we use the advances in human ingenuity to actually focus on enjoying our lives while we can instead of worrying about the future. We still have a little bit more of this ramble to go on. And... We're so separated from it that, yeah, public ex executions would, uh, would also help us to have a little memento mori. Of course. Next question. Public executions would give us a memento mori. You're not exactly the spitting image of some kind of stoic using aphorisms to inspire his living. Do we need to state outright that public executions would do more than just provide the specter of death? A memento mori. Public executions are a statement about the power the state has over your life. It is an event at which the inhabitants of a locale are invited to participate in that display of power as it creates an us versus them, a good versus bad dichotomy, and allow those who keep on living to have a sense of moral smugness for the moment, but perhaps a little fear for themselves or loved ones. Before we leave this clip, I find it really amazing that in the age of video, Knowles thinks we don't see enough death. We have just been through COVID, which took nearly 7 million lives, according to WHO, as of mid-March worldwide. It's true that during the first part of the pandemic, hospitals had protocols in place where you couldn't visit people who were hospitalized for COVID. But you know, people in general weren't complacent about that rule and it caused a lot of heartache and trauma people wanted to be with their loved ones at the end of life. So it's not like they were avoiding seeing death. We've also just seen a massive earthquake in Turkey and the war in Ukraine rages on with photos abounding of these events. 
Here in the U.S., there is a steady flow of mass shootings as well as extrajudicial public executions of our citizens. A high percentage relative to population of them are black. We see the videos, but there are communities that live with that. And this on top of people who commit suicide, die of drug overdoses, and do I even need to go on? Death is all around if we just look, if we just open our eyes. We know more about the scale of death than people in the past did because of social media and global journalism. Of course, we're not facing that death, but we are bombarded with it regularly. So it's not like we're unaware of death. But really, what purpose does all this serve? Nolce's rant is a piling on about our fallen world. It is to tell believers that they are more hardcore, they are better, they are morally superior if they are using their life to serve their death. They are the good ones, not like those superficial young people who drink overpriced coffees while enjoying a nice picture on their phone. And Michael Knowles has it all figured out, y'all. So keep listening to him so you can hear about how hardcore you are and how you will all gather after the rapture to laugh at the poor souls who enjoyed their life but are now burning in a lake of fire. So screw the Michael Knowleses of this world. I watched my mom die. It wasn't fun. It was a duty I fulfilled, and I'm glad I did it. I know people whose parents have lots of ailments, and they are doing their best. If we sometimes choose to just celebrate life, that is because we understand that sometimes life is hard, it is suffering, and we have no control over when that suffering and death comes. But while you can, enjoy a flower, drink a fun beverage, think about the most inane, superficial song you like, walk down the street without a care in the world. For tomorrow, who knows, that's your memento mori. That is better inspiration than whatever it is that Michael Knowles is going on about. All right, a little heavy today, but I feel a little passionately about this one. But what did you think? Did something strike you about what Michael Knowles said? Or do you have any thoughts about death and the death penalty? Put it in the comments below. And while you're down there, you know what to do. Like and subscribe and do all the YouTube stuff. You're on YouTube. You know what to do. I have more sin coming up. Sin, sin, sin. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.